I could really use some time off. I'd love to go for a little boat ride, stop for a picnic. That sounds so relaxing. It'd be fantastic if all of that could happen without me having to paddle at all. That's what we're aiming for today, is a canoe that can paddle itself. We could just strap on a motor and propeller, but that's not as beautiful or relaxing as a paddle. Plus, for some reason, that feels too easy. Can he lead a normal life? No, he'll be an engineer. <laughs> no. Here's what I'm thinking. We get a canoe and we mount some robot arms onto the canoe to replace our flimsy human arms. Give the arms some paddles, add a little software on top, and blam, we have ourselves a robot canoe. First thing we need to figure out is hardware. And the arms we're gonna use are these Piper arms from Agile X. These are really low power, fairly low weight, six axis arms. They're fairly easy to control. They have ROS packages and other software set up for doing simulations. But the main reason I wanna use them is I have two. They have a one and a half kilogram payload, which is really good for like basic pick and place tasks or some AI training. Might be a little light for something like this, but we won't know till we try. I need to figure out a way to mount these arms onto the canoe without modifying the canoe, because it's not mine, but finding a way that's actually fairly light. The heavier the canoe is, the harder it is to move. So I need something that's lightweight, but also rigid enough that as the arms are paddling, the whole thing isn't flexing. Extrusion is perfect for this. We're gonna be using 2020 aluminum extrusion, and I'm gonna try to mount it so that it's squished between the gunnels and the yoke on the canoe. I can Google boat words. That way it should be pretty easy to get this whole setup on and off without completely disassembling it. We also need a way to mount a paddle onto the end of each arm. A lightweight kayak paddle that splits in half should work perfectly. I don't have a CNC machine or a machine shop here since we mostly do software. I could 3D print the parts, but I wanna make sure that they're strong enough so that they don't snap when I'm out in the water and then I get marooned on an island and a ball becomes my best friend. So all of this should be machined, probably out of aluminum to keep it light. I'm gonna use JLC for this. I've used JLC before to do some personal 3D printing of little resin models. The process was really smooth, it all worked really well, so today I wanna to try their CNC service. I've designed all of the parts in SolidWorks. I can upload them directly to their website, pick things like surface finish and material, put in quantity, and I get a quote right away. It seems like this is just as easy as a 3D printing side. While all those parts are away getting machined, let's talk software. We need some sort of an operating system for controlling robots, or like a robot operating system. Yeah, we're gonna use ROS. Operating system isn't really the right term, because it's not. It's more of a framework, but it has all of the tooling we're actually gonna need to make this project fairly easy. We're gonna be using this Jetson Aura Nano to run the whole thing. It's small, low power, but also it costs less than most of my other computers, so if I roll the boat, it's less of a waste of money. Ross has a lot of ways to simulate or display what a robot is doing, which makes it really easy for us to do all of our development ahead of time. So hopefully, whenever those parts do arrive from JLC, we're already ready to go with software. Let's take a quick step back and think of how you actually control a boat. You paddle on one or both sides of the boat, and that changes both the speed and the direction. This is called velocity control. And this is how most mobile robots are controlled. In our case, we're gonna have a six axis robot arm on each side of the canoe, and that is gonna control how the paddle moves. But Ross doesn't really have a controller for controlling 12 axes that all work together to move a paddle. 
So we're going to kind of lie to it a little bit. We're going to tell Ross that you have a single wheel on either side. It basically is telling Ross that we have a giant aquatic Roomba. This is called differential drive. And Ross already has controllers built in for handling this kind of thing. We tell Ross how fast we want to go just using a normal controller. If it's good enough for a submarine, it's good enough for me. Ross control takes that and calculates how fast each wheel needs to turn. Sends that speed to our hardware interface, which calculates where the paddles are in their individual stroke. Inverse kinematics then calculates how the arm needs to move itself to put the paddle in the right spot. Then it sends those joint angles to the arms. While I'm being boated around, it's a great time to learn something new from today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver using your computer or on the go with your phone, like this course about programming with Python, which will walk you through how to create new programs using variables, loops, functions, and is done in a very step-by-step -step progressive manner where you can get hands-on experience using just your phone. With the mobile app, it's really easy to learn a little bit every day. Brilliant keeps you on track to reaching your learning goals one day at a time. To learn from free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash davesarmory, scan the code on screen, or click the link in the description. Brilliant's also giving our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited access every day to everything Brilliant has to offer. We ordered our parts from JLC. They took about a week to come in. The ordering process was actually really easy to do. And well, let's see how they turned out. certainly are well packed. Oh, look at that. I got them anodized black so that they match the, uh, the base plates for the pipers. And that, I don't know if you can see that, that looks absolutely fantastic. All right, here's all the little Clips. Beautiful. Oh. Basically press fit. There we go. So nice little plates. Again, all anodized black. So here's one of the arms. All that fits on the end. Oh, that's absolutely jazzed about this. Let's get this put together. might be wondering how we're going to be powering all of this. I can't exactly drag an extension cord out into a lake. This is the Blue Eddy AC200L. It has two kilowatts of power storage, both AC and DC output, 
and could even charge with solar for really long boat trips. I've actually taken this thing camping with me and it's a fantastic source of power. The display on it will show me how much power is being used and how much is left with the BMS, but it also has a Bluetooth app that I can use so I can monitor the battery usage and how much power is left over directly from my phone. All right, a few quick sanity checks first. Am I getting data from the controller? Yes. Check that the arms are working. I'm getting data from the arm. Not the right data though. A little later. Now to see if this all works. Huh. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, after some faffing around, I think I fixed the bug that I added to the driver. Here goes nothing, I guess. I, again. Well, that's not supposed to happen either. More moments later. Oh. Two very boring minutes later. Okay, I think I fixed all of the bugs that I previously created. So... Let's see. Okay. All right. Slow forward. Yes. You can hear the vibration. The motion isn't super smooth which again is my doing. Nice. And if I turn, they go in different directions, which makes sense. That's fantastic. I want to go try it.
definitely isn't fast, but it sure is relaxing. Remember, these are small arms for development, not for heavy lifting. If you like robots and nonsense, make sure to subscribe. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.